Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at the iPod app for the iPad. So the app you use on your iPad to play music is called iPod. It's the same thing as on the iPhone. So you touch the iPod app and it launches an app that shows all of your different music, video, podcast, all sorts of things that you normally would find, say, in iTunes on your Mac or just on your iPod in the main interface. Okay, so to get into the iPod app, tap it right there. It's usually down in the dock portion of your home screen and it brings up your music library first. You can scroll through this. You can also sort them by songs like this or artists and it'll group them together by artists like that. You can see all your artists. You can go by albums and it'll give you pictures. You can also do genres. So to play a song, you already have one selected, but you can just tap right there and it'll start playing. You can't hear it right here, but you can jump to another one like that. And it will bring up the album artwork. Tap on the album artwork and it gives you more controls, including looping controls, shuffling controls. Create a genius playlist from this track. Uh, you can also uh, adjust the volume here. You can jump around in the song itself. You could bring up the list of tracks on the album. And it will also display any information you've got in your notes uh, par portion of iTunes. So if you store song lyrics in there, you'll see them there as well. In the main interface, you can also view podcasts and you can go through all the different podcasts you've got and choose an episode and you can play it. And if it's a video podcast, though, the interesting thing is it jumps to the videos app. It doesn't stay in the iPod app, which will be very confusing because when you finish the video, you're still in the videos app and you don't go back to the screen. One of the cool things that you can do is create your own playlist. And it's not just an on the go playlist. You can create a real playlist with a name. And once you've got it, you can go through this special interface here where you could add songs to the playlist by pressing a plus sign here to the right. And you can add a whole bunch of different songs, just some random things. And then tap done. You can sort your music in all sorts of different ways uh, while you're doing that. So you get this here. Now you can hit done and you have that playlist. You can uh, also add more songs. You can use these here in the ends to drag the songs around in a different order. And then when you sync it back to your Mac, I found that these playlists here, they will play um, and sync back just as normal. So we can go edit, done. We can jump to another playlist that was created, edit that one add songs to it, jumps back to the list. Search function is also very useful. You can search for things by song name or artist or both uh, and come up with a list here and you can jump around into the different categories uh, and play these just like it was part of your music collection. It's almost like creating a very quick playlist uh, because you can just play and it will play all these that are found and you can even tap shuffle and it will shuffle all these that are found. So you can just search for a genre or an artist. Say if you just want to search for uh, say Miles Davis, it will come up with all the Miles Davis songs, press play and it will just play them all without you having to create a custom playlist. Now like the iPhone and the iPod Touch, when a song is playing like it is right now, uh, you don't have to return to the iPod app to pause it or stop the song. Uh, you can just double tap the home button. And if you've got this set in your preferences like this, which is the default, it comes with this little mini uh, iPod control. You can quickly bring up the entire iPod app or you could pause or go to the previous song or the next song. So the iPod app provides a very nice interface for playing back your music. I particularly like the fact that you can create real playlists and sync them back to your Mac. I really wish they had incorporated the visualizer. That's the feature of iTunes for Mac and Windows that shows all sorts of weird special effects as music's being played. It seems like the iPad screen is perfect for that and they're already trying to push it kind of as it's this picture frame where when you're not using your iPad you kind of put it somewhere where it looks pretty. So why not have it actually play the visualizer while you're playing music as well. So it's a decent app and it's pretty much what you expect. Hopefully they can add some more features to it in the future since the iPad is powerful enough to handle them. Hope you like this look at iPod for iPad. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.